We are starting today's vlog with an unboxing. As you can see behind me, I've had a few parcels arrive from different brands and I'm looking forward to opening them. I'm gonna confess, two of them I've already opened and tried on and sadly, those items are gonna be going back. But I'm gonna show you them anyway because they're beautiful pieces, exactly what I was looking for. Just the fit wasn't quite there for my body shape. But that's not to say that they wouldn't be great for your body shape or your partner's body shape. So we're gonna get cracking opening them. I hope everybody's having a great week so far. Porter with me, he's come to join me for the video, haven't you mate? Porter loves an unboxing. He's a big unboxing fan. He spends lots of his time watching unboxings. Don't you? Unboxing dog treats. Yeah. Good boy. So just to give a little bit of a backing story, I guess, to some of these orders. I have pretty much worn my Laura Piana summer walks to death and I absolutely love them. And they don't sell them anymore in my colour which is really frustrating because I'd 110% buy two pairs in my size of that particular color brown. So I've been looking to get a new pair and they're currently only selling three colors and it's like a mustard yellow, a kind of quite a vibrant green and a blue. And I don't dislike the colors, but they're not necessarily my go-to colors. Um, I'll just pop them here so you can see. I like to have quite neutral and perhaps we could say safe colours, especially on my feet. So I started searching for moccasins, which is what the style of shoe are, that would fit the bill. And so I have tried a few different brands. I'm sure most of you would have seen the Aradian unboxing that I did a few weeks ago. And in that order, I did have some moccasins which looked perfect. The shape, the style, even the sole almost looked identical to Loro Piana's. So I was like, these are the ones. As it's worked out, they're too slim. I've then ordered some from a brand that you can see up here. We'll get them out in a second. I can't remember off the top of my head. Again, too narrow. And I'm not sure if it's because they're Italian. They're a bit slimmer. Aurelian's Netherlands. So that doesn't really explain that, does it? <laughs> but... Maybe it's just because I've got wide feet. So I've ordered another pair in an olive and they're from Velasca. And I've actually had a pair of shoes from them before, a pair of leather loafers that fitted really nicely. However, the espadrilles and the sneakers from Aurelian fitted very nicely. So that doesn't mean anything. So we're gonna unbox them, we're gonna take a look, but I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm on the hunt for some nice moccasins. And so if you've got any brands that you suggest that I check out and you know that they have this kind of style and even better still, if you're aware that they have a wider uh, fit, then I would love to know because I am on the search for a nice pair um, ASAP and I can't find one at the minute. So we'll continue to look unless these Alaska moccasins actually come through. So the brand that I was just talking about a second ago, Ascaroso, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. I discovered this brand, I think it was on Farfetch, and I really like their stuff. Um, they had a nice selection of clothing and shoes. And so I selected these, which are slightly darker than I would have liked, but they've got the perfect soles, they're the right sort of silhouette and shape, and as you can see, very smart, very classic moccasins. However, even though they don't look it, they are extremely narrow on my feet. And what they were causing were my feet to kind of like just crunch a little bit. So they were just sort of pinching in and I was getting a slight bend in my foot, which I've had on quite a fair few brands to be fair, because I have got wide feet. It isn't the shoe, it's definitely my style of foot. I can't remember whether my Loro Piano ones were, because I probably got them like two or three years ago. I've had them a long time, and I might have just sort of like broke them in. These just feel, felt particularly tight, and so um, these are gonna be going back, but if you don't have narrow feet, then you're in luck, because Aurelian, Scarosso, they've absolutely nailed the uh, moccasins, so it's a shame, but I'll continue to look. Now this next item I'm actually really sad about because they're just exactly what I was looking for. 
I wanted a pair of formal shorts that had a belt buckle on them and they had a pleat on them. Like I've mentioned many times before, I find pleated trousers just allow for me to have a little bit more space in my quads, which makes them a lot more comfortable. That means I wear them a lot more. And in turn, I feel like the look then looks more chic because it looks more effortless and comfortable and easy. And these looked the part, but they were just a bit uncomfortable. And they're from Brelia, 1949. And when I hold them up, you can see that they slightly narrow, but they weren't too tight around the quad. They've got a nice turn up. Where I found they're a bit uncomfortable is inside, you can actually see where they've done their seam inside. And this was kind of like sticking up into my uh, crotch area and it was a little bit uncomfortable. There's also a lot of stiffness around the waistline. I don't know if you can see there that gap. Well, this is just a, a belt that they give you with them, but this was actually sticking in to my bum and it was a bit uncomfortable and they were a little bit loose. They need a little bit taken out of them, but there is quite a lot of fabric in there. It was quite heavy. And so it was causing a little bit of irritation. I also found the same that the two buttons at the front, I don't know if you can see that very well, but the, the button goes into the buttonhole there and that button hole here, I don't know how to show you this. There's the button, there's the hole. And if I was to do the button up, it creates that gap here because the button needs to be stitched further back. They've stitched it too closely together. So I ended up with a bit of bulgy fabric here, a bit of bulging fabric at the back and the way in which they've stitched the shorts together because this sticks upwards, it ended up causing a lot of discomfort on the inside leg. So unfortunately, these are gonna be going back, but I think that apart from the build of the shorts, which caused me discomfort, the actual design of the shorts are like spot on. The fabric feels really nice. The cut was quite nice. The color of the linen was exactly what I was looking for. The pleats, everything was spot on. They were the shorts that unfortunately didn't quite work. Just before we jump back onto the shoes, another parcel from Farfetch arrived and I had a Boss Polo that I really loved and it's just over the years lost its shape. I've probably had it now for about two years and it just kind of like boxed out a little bit. It's probably gone through the tumble dryer one too many times. And so I looked online and uh, I was actually looking for shoes at the time, hence the moccasin thing. And this came up and it was on the bottom in the sale. And it's another Boss uh, Polo that had a very similar fabric to that of the one that I'm mentioning now. And I thought, you know what? I never really see that slightly heavier knitted fabric. And so, it's the same brand, it looks like the same style of top. I'm just gonna pick it up because I've got so much wear out of it and it looks like it's coming to the end of its life. So I have another cream polo, nothing too exciting, but you can't beat the uh, wardrobe essentials. So that's probably gonna stay as long as it fits okay. Boss polos tend to uh, be very consistent with their sizing, so I shouldn't have any issues there. This next parcel is from my Teresa and Oh, it's so bad, I can't remember what I order. Mr. Tom Ford. I like his fragrances. And I saw these online, and recently you'd have seen on my channel that I unboxed a pair of shoes. I think actually, no, maybe I didn't show you. I think I just returned them because we were going away. So I ordered a pair of shoes very similar to this from a brand that I discovered on Instagram. And when they arrived, they were too small. And so when I went back to order a size up, they were sold out. And so I actually never ended up getting them. And then I came across these Tom Ford kind of similar style shoe. So we're gonna take a look. I don't actually have anything like this in my wardrobe, but they are an espadrille slipper. Now these I would wear if I was going out. So these aren't for around the house, these are what I'll be going out. But the only thing that I wasn't sure when I was ordering them online were that they have a flat toe. So as you can see easier from the back, you'll see that they've got a flat toe finish on them and uh, or a square toe, should I say. And I wasn't sure about that because I feel like it, it makes them look a bit stubby, but actually in person, they don't look bad at all. And so I'm hoping, hello my boy, you okay? 
I'm hoping that these are going to fit nicely, but they look absolutely stunning looking at those inside. I love the little bit of leather at the back of the shoe for a bit of comfort, and they've got a nice darker tone to them, which I really like as well. So, moment of truth. Oh, oh yes. They fit very nicely, Barcolini. Tom Ford knows about the wide feet. So there's something a little bit different. They're not the normal sort of style of shoe that I would go for, but they're very comfortable. They're gonna be easy to slip on and off, and they're the kind of shoe that would replace a sandal. Um, I would wear these with some linen trousers if we're on holiday. For example, in the Maldives, these would have been perfect. If we were heading out for dinner, Lids and I, in a hot country, again, these would be great for that. I wouldn't wear these if we were gonna be going exploring around you know, the towns and doing lots of walking but if we were sort of just having a nice relaxed day at a beach club or something, these are the sort of shoes that I would wear in that instance. So they're um, a different style. I would say that it looks like one of the actual shoes is wider than the other. Maybe looked like somebody's returned these and they've sent them out, but it could just be me. But it, I feel like this shoe here is bigger than that shoe there in terms of its width. You see that? I mean, am I going mad? I don't know. They just look slightly wider, but they're not. They're not. They are exactly the same. It just looks like someone else with really wide feet put these on. They do, don't they? They do look bigger. That one there. Anyway, very happy with those. My uh, first Tom Ford footwear purchase and they're staying, which they don't actually have the um, moccasins that I'm looking for. Otherwise, of course, I would have, after this fit, gone and had a look at purchasing those, but really nice shoe bags as well. I actually never used to use shoe bags and I don't often put the shoes actually in the bag anymore, but what I do is I use the shoe bags to just wrap over the top of shoes when we go traveling. So in the suitcase, all of my shoes have shoe bags that cover them just to keep them protected from anything else in the suitcase that might damage them. And I also use these now to separate between worn and clean clothes. If, for example, we head to the farmhouse and I take a spare pair of clothes in a gym bag and shoes, I will put the clothes in, I'll put the bags on top and then the shoes on top of that so the shoes don't transfer any dirt from the sole onto the clean clothes. And, you know, vice versa, if I take a jacket and I don't end up wearing it. I put the dirty gym clothes at the bottom. I then put the bag on top of those and then I put my cleaner jacket on top of the bags. So it just keeps kind of like a bit of separation in a one compartment bag. So I do end up using these a lot more now than I used to. So I will be keeping hold of them. They feel lovely and soft. Now, last but not least, the Velasca Milano moccasins that I've been telling you about. We'll uh, quickly open these up. One thing I'd say about this brand, and I actually really love it, when you place an order, you get a nice courtesy email, and it feels like they've got a nice community within the business, and there's a lot of care and attention to their customers. And just opening this box straight away, you know, you've got a picture of somebody working in their workshop. It's nicely displayed, like you're opening a present, and I feel like they really take a lot of pride in ensuring that the customer's experience is as best and as nice as it can be. This is what I'm talking about, another lovely note. So it just says that, you know, these are handcrafted shoes made in Italy. And if you're reading this, then you've already made us really happy because what you have in your hands is the result of an ambitious project. Velasco was born out of a great passion for Italy and for all things made in Italy. Our goal is to make luxury products accessible to all without ever compromising on quality. This is why we carefully craft our products according to the ancient traditions of fine shoemaking and we deliver them directly to you through the web. No middlemen, just great value. The result, beautiful products designed to help you at your best. Thank you for choosing our shoes, our passion and your comfort in our business. And then it's signed off. It comes with all of the return details. So I decided to go for a pair of green 
moccasins because I'd already ordered, as you saw, brown and uh, I was secretly hoping that they were going to fit and I was going to be able to keep them and I was just going to have two different brands because I'm secretly hoping that these are going to fit as well. But first impressions are very good. The soles are slightly thicker to those of Laura Piana and that I probably would have liked. I think that slightly thinner soles would have been a bit more elegant. I would have preferred that. However, they're not so thick that it deters me. And let's be honest, I could do with a little extra height, couldn't I? So I won't get too upset about that, but I'm gonna quickly try these on and see how they fit. So they're the first pair of shoes that I've ordered that actually fit me um, width-wise, which is fantastic because <laughs> I felt like I was uh, fighting a losing battle. And of course, if Laura Piana come back with the colorways that I want, I will 100% be purchasing from them because I know that the shoes last and they're very comfortable and they've got that nice, elegant size sole. These, fantastic, but as I said, the soles are a little bit thicker than I would have preferred, uh, but they're very comfortable as uh, I'm wearing one now. I really like the color of them as well. I think that they will make a nice addition to my wardrobe and uh, I haven't got any green loafers, so these will definitely be staying. Um, they have got a variety of colors on their website, so I'm gonna um, style these up a little bit and see how I get along with them. I'll take it from there. I might order some more colors in these and uh, keep my eye out, but I'm happy because I found a pair of shoes that are actually comfortable to wear that fit the kind of style that I'm going for. And I am very pleased because I've been very impressed with Velasca Milano and so I'm happy that these aren't gonna be returning. Good to do business with them. So I am going to clean this mess up and I'm gonna get myself ready for an event this evening. And as always, I'll leave a link to all of the products that I just mentioned in the description box down below. Just to recap, I'm gonna be keeping the Boss Polo, 99% sure, the Velasco Milano loafers and the Tom Ford Espadrilles. So all in all, not too bad. That's three out of four items that I'm keeping. So I've done a lot better than I have done recently. Actually, I've just seen there is one more parcel over there that I need to open. I forgot to bring it over. This is class. So Aston Martin have teamed up with Lego and they've created Lego of the Aston Martin Valkyrie AMR Pro and the Aston Martin Vantage GT3. So they've sent a note that's basically said that Aston Martin is coming to the pits of bricks. They're giving enthusiasts the chance to explore the innovative vehicle design and assembly of some of the most complex cars. This new set will test your speed and accuracy and a race against the clock. Carefully construct the set of 592 pieces which will create Lego Aston Martin Vantage GT3 and the Aston Martin Valkyrie AMR Pro. This marks ultimate track only no rules hypercar with its 6.5 litre engine revving up to 11,000 RPM and producing 1,000 brake horsepower. The miniature versions also include two driver minifigures, sporting racing suits, helmets and wrenches. That is very cool. Have you seen this, lids? Right, I'm now gonna get this office tidied up and get myself ready to head out for this evening. We're back in the office, it's a new day. Yesterday's event didn't actually happen in the end because there was a little bit of confusion with the uh, car situation and unfortunately my cab company canceled the car because the contact number wasn't me. And the person on the other end, unfortunately, didn't make the call on time, which meant that I didn't end up getting down there. There was an option for me to have got a car down a little bit later. They were gonna reschedule me a car, but it would have meant that I had like half an hour to an hour at the event. And that's if traffic went well. So it just felt a little bit pointless to go all that way for such a short period of time. So instead, I stayed at home and chilled and we watched a film actually on the sofa, Lids and I, which was very nice because it has been a very intensive couple of weeks. I've been doing lots of sports and uh, doing lots of bits and bobs. So just to sit down for two minutes was lovely. But I thought, considering this video has pretty much been an unboxing, I've done a little bit of editing this morning and I was like, wow, I ramble on a lot. We've done 20 minutes to open five items. And I actually said in my video that I'd kept three out of four items, I'd actually kept three out of five. 
but anyway, I know that that would have only triggered the minority of you. And I thought whilst we're uh, doing an unboxing, I also had a couple of lovely pieces sent recently that I thought, you know what, we'll make this video an unboxing. And uh, so I'm going to finish this video off with A, we're going to do, we're going to attempt building one of the Lego cars. And B, I've got a couple of pieces that I'd love to show you. So when we were in France with L'Artisan Perfumer, they mentioned about one of, well actually, they didn't mention, in store, they had this absolutely beautiful wooden sphere. I was like, that's stunning, what is it? Turns out it's not wooden, it's actually uh, clay, but the patina on it actually gives it the appearance of wood. Um, and it's like a home diffuser, I guess you could call it. And they call it the amber ball, and it's got a really rich, lovely smell to it, not to mention the aesthetic of this is absolutely perfect for my office. And so very kindly, they said they were gonna send one out for me to have in the office. And I'm not kidding you, there is somewhere, I think when it was sent out, yeah, just up here, there's just a little bit of a break in the cardboard, and I can smell this. Like, it's been sent in my room, and there's just a little break in the cardboard. And every time I walk into my office since this arrived, I'm like, oh, what's that smell? I'm like, oh, it's the, uh, it's the ball. So this is gonna be incredible when it's actually out of its packaging, because it already smells amazing in its packaging, and all it has is just a very small, little break in the cardboard where it was obviously chucked around by the couriers as they do. But just before we take a look at this, they sent some lovely note, which references the actual conversation that we had. Isabel's basically reiterated the fact that this would be very fitting for my office. So she also sent out a little bit of information for us. So it says the amber ball is a handcrafted design object that perfumes your home in an original way. The terracotta sphere with a patina that gives the appearance of wood is handmade in France by a potter and each piece is unique. The beautiful object diffuses the warm golden scent of amber thanks to perfumed crystals contained in the sphere. Its fragrance will remain for over two years and you can revive it afterwards with a refill of amber crystals. It also says that just to be careful when caring for this product, not to wash it with water and just to use a lint-free cloth. So it sounds amazing. I can tell you it smells amazing. The fragrance that's actually inside here, it says it's amber, balmy notes blending vanilla, patchouli, tonka bean, benzoin and incense. And I'd say that I really do get that incense through with this. So let's quickly take a look at what this piece looks like. So you'll see what I mean when I say that this really does look like it's wood, but it is actually terracotta. And it's got this lovely handcrafted design with the perforated detail on it, which obviously give the scent the ability to be able to release. It smells exactly how I can smell it through the packaging. And I think it just looked really nice, just sat on the side in my office. And the actual color of this wood is very different to that of the cabinetry, but it complements it nicely. I think if this was lighter, it might not work as well, like if it was like a bleached wood, but the fact that it's just a nice deep dark brown just works really nicely. So somewhere up here, I'm gonna find a little bit of space for that to live. And um, I just think that it looks really smart. It's very nice. So if you have this kind of style and you're looking for a really nice diffuser to just sit integrated, because for me, this doesn't look like a room diffuser. It looks like a ornamental piece. It looks like something that you've put in for an aesthetical appearance as opposed to being functional as well. So that's really lovely. So thank you to Lata San Perfumer. That's a very lovely gift. And just before I move off of fragrances, I also received a package from Creed. So they've sent out this beautiful Italian handcrafted leather fragrance sleeve, which is a nod to the heritage of Creed. They have been established since 1970, and I think that we will all be very familiar with the famous Aventus, which is one of their best-selling fragrances as far as I'm aware. And this is also my first Creed fragrance. Now, I don't think I need to tell you much about this fragrance. You've probably already smelled it on people out and about because it's extremely popular. It projects really, really well. So this is the latest addition to my fragrance wardrobe. And this carry case is gonna be very convenient because the last thing you want when you're traveling is to open up. Oh, Luna's getting on me out of that, by the way. 
to open up a smash bottle of fragrance because that is sad time. So this is just gonna uh, keep the fragrance safe when traveling and it also looks, <laughs> good girl. It also looks really smart as well. So a big thank you to the Creed family as well. It's very generous of you. I look forward to exploring the Creed collection more as well because I haven't actually smelled many of their fragrances. And I know that Creed are very highly regarded. So that is another fragrance to add to my collection. But we are going to have a go at building the Aston Martin Lego set very soon. But just before I do that, I do need to do a little bit of work. We're gonna be shooting a reel today for Sky, which I'm really looking forward to doing. There's gonna be a little bit of humor in there as well, which is something a little bit different that I'm bringing to my Instagram. Not in general, but just in this video. I'm not that funny, let's be honest. Um, but today's video is just kind of a very loose and light take. And so uh, we're gonna get busy doing that. And hopefully it doesn't cloud over as much as it did yesterday, because at four o'clock yesterday, it was like, it could have been autumn winter time. It was that dark. So I'm gonna uh, quickly get busy with that and I'll see you very soon. Well, I have just had a text message from Lewis who sorted me out with my club fittings and he's let me know that my clubs have actually arrived. So I am going to quickly shut up shop here and I'm gonna head over to collect those because he's got a lesson today at midday. So. I need to make sure that I try and get there before that. So I need to leave now really. And um, I'll probably hit a few balls on the range just to make sure that I'm 100% happy. Not that there's probably anything I can do now because I've ordered them, but uh, I will uh, still like to get out and just hit a couple of balls on the range. I'm gonna do that and um, then we'll come back and I'm probably gonna have a go at building that Lego. So let's go. Well, I was just about to walk out the door and the postman came and dropped off this package which says on it, Yuramaki handmade sushi, handled with care, freshly prepared. So this needs to go in the fridge because not only is it a glorious day today, you don't want to be leaving fish out for too long out of the uh, refrigerator. So we're going to open this up and take a look and see what's inside. I'm sure Lydia wouldn't mind. Inside we've got some sushi. Thank you for choosing Yuramaki Handmade Sushi. Please see serving suggestions on the reverse of this card. Be cool, not cold. <laughs> Traditionally, sushi is eaten at room temperature. Chilled sushi and sashimi have less flavor when eaten too cold. For the best results, we recommend removing your sushi case from the refrigerator one hour before you would like to enjoy it. This way, the flavor and texture will be at their optimum. We hope you enjoy your experience and we would appreciate it very much if you could take a moment to review at Yuramaki and Facebook or Google search Yuramaki Sushi Nottingham. And they put their Instagram handle, which is Yuramaki Sushi UK. So this is freshly prepared sushi that you can get at home. And inside here, we're gonna take a quick peek and see what's inside because I can't wait till tomorrow. Wow. Look at this. Looks incredible. Now I wish I knew my sushi well enough to tell you exactly what all of these things are. These are one of our favorites. This is what we're gonna be enjoying, I'm assuming tomorrow at lunch or something because this looks absolutely delicious. You can smell it, can't you? Reset your ears. Look at your nose working double time. Yes. I'm gonna give you a little doggy treat. Yes. You don't know whether to sit or stand, do you, Porter? It's all a bit too much. <laughs> Bless her. <laughs> well, here we have them, the new sticks. As you can see, we've got the 50 Voki, which is a new loft wedge that I've got. And then I've got my irons, which are the P770s from TaylorMade. Also, my brand new bag that we won the other day, I didn't actually tell you, we uh, were in a competition the other day, four ball, and uh, we took first place, so I got this Callaway bag. Got a couple of balls to hit with. I'm not gonna film me today because the range is very busy, and I'm sure there are lots of gentlemen there that would rather not feature on YouTube. But I am gonna go hit these balls and hopefully get on well with the new clubs. Well, I can confirm that was a great success. The P770s are absolutely fantastic. They're a lot bigger than I remember them being when we did the fitting, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So I'm really, really happy with how they came out. I'm now at a point with my set where I have the majority of all of my clubs sorted. So I've got irons, wedges, putter and driver. 
exactly what I'm looking for. I continue to use my existing woods, but eventually they will get changed out. There is a possibility I might get a driving iron. Um, we were looking at those the other day, but we'll see. We'll see how I get along and how my game uh, hopefully improves with these new sticks and also with the new swing. So good times, but before I sign this video off, I am going to build the Aston Martin Lego model. I think I'm gonna do the Vantage because I think I uh, quite like the color of the Vantage. So we're gonna have a go at that. If you've made it this far, well done. And the end of this video will be a time lapse of me making that. Hopefully quite soothing and therapeutic to watch. So, so as always, thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this week's video. As always, I will leave the links in the description box down below for everything that I unboxed during this video. And I look forward to seeing you next week at 5 p.m. Take care, peace.